Summer is coming to its end in Alaska. But for these desperate creatures, the final struggle is just beginning. They are sockeye salmon, and the waterways run red with their urgent upstream mission to reach their birthplace and breed. But something hungry this way comes. against the sockeye are staggering. Perhaps one in a thousand will get through. But salmon are the lifeblood of this wilderness. And the fate of many depends on the success of the few. It's January in the Great North, and winter whistles through snowy Aleutian peaks. Sub-freezing temperatures had the glacial valleys locked up solid. But in liquid havens where temperatures hover above freezing, precious nurseries are hard at work. Billions of pearly salmon eggs laid last summer now shimmer with embryonic life. Above ground, there's no hurrying spring in this part of the world. Ptarmigan still wear their winter whites. Red foxes eavesdrop on voles under the snow. But this is the season of disappointment. To escape the bitter cold, Alaska's giants have gone to ground. Snug in a mountainside den, ravenous brown bear cubs nurse with gusto. Their mother has not eaten since entering the den in fall and the entire family must exist on her reserves of fat until spring. So while the cubs grow rapidly, she is losing weight. As the days lengthen, the legacy of another mother, now long dead, begins to quicken. In gravel beds, an orphaned generation of salmon shows a first recognizable sign of life a rudimentary eye. The embryo breathes through its permeable egg membrane, siphoning oxygen from the surrounding waters. The yolk is covered in a fine red lace of capillaries. These rush nutrients throughout the bloodstream of the developing creature. The whole system powered by a game little heart. Weeks later, a full-blown eye announces that it's time for the little sockeye's emergence. They must break free of the egg membrane and breathe on their own. A first test in a lifetime of struggle. Once out, they lie low on the gravel, but they'll soon use up their yolk sacs and have to move on to eat or be eaten. With the sun now climbing ever higher in the sky, the melt is on. Returning birds snatch the first chilled hors d'oeuvres from glittering trays.
a golden crowned sparrow serenades the thaw. Tundra swans arrive from the lower 48, honking spring's greeting to those emerging from winter dens. The bear family is out and about, a groggy matriarch at the helm. Thanks to mother's milk, the cubs have energy to spare. But after months of fasting, she's in need of the basics. It's May. Ptarmigan start trading white for brown. And the waterways are decked out in green. In streams made swift by snowmelt, young sockeye have left their gravel nurseries and congregate in the less hectic waters along the banks. Now called fry, the inch-long baby salmon have used up their yolk sacs. They begin to hunt for microscopic plankton and become themselves hunted. After a long flight in from South America, a yellow legs would like nothing better than a breakfast of tasty young fry. Despite the birds, the banks may be the lesser of two evils for the tiny salmon. Should they get swept midstream, even fiercer appetites await. Voracious Arctic char will pick them off at an eye blink. Attrition runs high. Nine of ten hatchlings may die on this first leg of the sockeye's journey. Their only hope lies in pressing downstream. They must find a plankton-rich nursery to sustain them for a year or two. Throughout southwest Alaska, where rivers widen into lakes, the baton is about to be passed in the salmon's relay race of survival. The tiny refugees of spring pour in by the millions from mountain streams. Waiting to pour out are their elders, one and two-year-old sockeye called Smolt, ready for the next dangerous leg to the sea. Though the waters teem with Smolt, they're too small for this starving bear to catch. Since fall, he's lost hundreds of pounds, perhaps a third of his full weight. Mothers often fare worse, sacrificing their own reserves for their hungry and persistent cubs. The days of plenty are still weeks away. For now, many a bear will settle for grazing. Grass will help sustain this mother until summer throws full-grown salmon at her feet. But smaller creatures must seize this moment to feast. Waves of smoke leaving the nursery lakes are about to be caught in a deadly pincer movement. Trout patrol the bottom. They drive the smolt upwards, then launch spectacular assaults. Gulls hover in anticipation, ready to dive into the slaughter. Merganser ducks paddle into the fray. With enemies everywhere, the surviving smolt press on. Each new day in the life of a smolt brings new waves of attackers. Now arctic terns hover over the banquet table. 
They've come from as far away as Antarctica for this feast. Males with full bills wing their way to their mates. A courtly exchange of smolt, a quick drink, and she's off to tend to their brood. Her egg laying coincides with the smolt run. In this wild place, the seasons of the salmon act as a biological clock. At last, the remaining smolt can break for open ocean. As the youngsters head out for up to three years at sea, they pass their elders coming home to spawn and die. Millions of full-grown sockeye are preparing to start upriver, where they'll face the ultimate challenge of their lives. In late June, ravenous anticipation runs high along Alaska's waterways. Befuddled cubs find their mothers suddenly mesmerized by the river. Everywhere, bears are craning and peering. For the salmon, there's no turning back. They get just one chance in a lifetime to breed. They will never eat again, but they will be eaten. The splashing of giants greets the first arrivals. rain down from giant paws. And the slaughter has barely begun. Waterfalls mean double jeopardy. In the pools below, the water writhes with backed up salmon making their desperate approach. Instinct propels them to lay their eggs upstream where they themselves were hatched. At each cascade, sockeye exhaust and batter themselves to death by the thousands. Thousands more will leap straight into waiting jaws. The sockeye migration is a windfall for brown bears who won't make it through the coming winter without packing on hundreds of pounds of fat. Some bears will catch as many as 30 six pound fish in a single day. That's more than 100,000 calories. These brown bears are anatomically identical to Alaska's grizzlies. They're just bigger, thanks to the salmon feast. Occasionally, spats break out over choice chomping grounds. Under the noses of the combatants, lucky salmon slip through. Survivors surge ever upward against the current. As the weeks slip away, these waters play host to an astonishing metamorphosis. The salmon have not eaten since leaving the sea. Starving, they begin to digest themselves from the outside in absorbing their silver scales and exposing skin which turns scarlet and smooth. At the same time, the head turns green and the male's snout takes a grotesque turn. 
Now they're in full mating regalia. Finally, the battered sockeye reached their final destination, the spawning grounds where they themselves were spawned. Perhaps one in a thousand has survived the round trip. It may have taken them five years and 7,000 miles to get back home. The female thrashes out a shallow nest and clears away silt that might suffocate her eggs. He shadows her, ready to do his part. But their courtship's about to hit a snag. A mother bear cannot afford to give the salmon a moment's peace. She's desperate to pack on fat. and she's still eating for three. Mothers must make the most of the salmon run. Her children are developing a taste for sockeye, but not yet the skill to catch their own. The salmon's flesh is now so soft, even milk teeth can tear it. The cubs will depend on their mother for another year when they'll begin to get the hang of salmon fishing for themselves. Already they're learning to pick up the scraps of her hunt. But there's still nothing like mother's milk for a hungry youngster. With a belly full of salmon, she can afford to indulge them. These are the days of abundance for the great brown bears, and the landscape is dotted with gorged and contented giants. Under cover of night, the spawning ritual culminates. A female shudders with the effort of expelling her eggs. Her mate shudders in reply, fertilizing them with a smoky stream of milt. A female can lay 1,000 eggs per nest and she may build several, which she'll cover with gravel. Sometimes she'll disturb the nests of others, dislodging stray eggs to be snapped up by hungry grayling. His reproductive duty done, a spent male sockeye waits to die. His conspicuous red spawning hump may mark him for a violent death. By night, a spectral giant haunts the salmon spawning grounds. Alaska's brown bears are believed to have excellent night vision, and the feasting goes on at all hours. The dawn will greet the ones that got away. Despite a mortal wound, this male salmon remains determined to spawn, shadowing a female's every move. But now the day shift is arriving, stomachs rumbling for a morning meal. A 
a massive old male trolls for easy pickings. Sockeye that have already spawned and begun to die. While he snorkels, gulls wait patiently for leftovers. Growing sluggish, salmon fleeing one bear may find themselves in the path of another. A female noses for victims on the bottom and comes up with dinner. Her yearling cub can't help but notice a free meal. Their patience rewarded, the gulls clean up the scraps, while the cub horns in on mother's prize. She willingly shares with the youngster, but it's high time he was catching his own. His sibling seems to have the right idea. This fish was virtually dead when he caught it, but it's still an accomplishment. The family can't afford to turn up their noses at dead or dying salmon. Instinct tells of lean times to come, and in bears, winter means survival of the fattest. Another Alaskan summer, all too brief, draws to its close. September brings the last placid days of plenty. But even now, clouds are gathering. Storm systems sweep in from the Bering Sea and down from the pole, whipping up breakers on the edges of lakes and rivers. The bears know there's a last supper yet to be had on these shores. They've come to work the surf. An old male takes a pounding for the sake of his fat stores. The presence of gulls may tell him of dead salmon in the waves. And as long as they're here, he'll work the surf to the bitter end. his tenacity finally pays off. The prize, a dead salmon, putrid and soft, but no doubt it suits an old bear with bad teeth just fine. Somewhere in the vastness of Southwest Alaska, an exhausted female hangs on. She has beaten the odds and laid more than 3,000 eggs. Here, the reward for an epic journey and profound good luck is death. The waters are strewn with the carcasses of the triumphant. Their offspring have no need of them now. But in death, they continue to feed the multitudes. In the frugal economy of the North, nothing goes to waste. In frigid waters, a sockeye decays slowly, releasing its riches in stages. Like an offering, it has brought the bounty of a distant ocean back to the place of its birth, to be taken up through soil and roots, sustaining humble and mighty alike. Unnoticed, the salmon's dying legacy permeates and renews a harsh wilderness. It is perhaps the bears who benefit most. Nurtured on rich red flesh, the cubs of salmon country will grow to dwarf their inland cousins, the grizzlies. 
and in watery nurseries, a new generation of sockeye lies in wait, a testament to their parents' magnificent journey of life and death.